Air defense is a joint operational responsibility whereby all forces are integrated into the function in accordance with an overall plan, with air defense artillery being mainly responsible for protection against the low-level air threat. In air defense terms, command involves orders which allocate tasks and subsequently deploy, move, and provide for the logistic support of air defense assets. Control is exercised at the highest practical level through the various formation air defense cells and command posts. It covers early warning information, the assignment of targets to air defense systems, airspace control orders, states of readiness, and the control of air defense fire. The theater air defense commander is normally appointed the airspace control authority and through the Air Defense Operations Center provides the centralized direction of fire and control of his assigned airspace. Within the Corps Air Defense, operations are centrally controlled by the respective formation AD cells and are coordinated with any ongoing air and ground activities. Components of the theater air defense effort include a control and reporting system designed to ensure the most effective response to an aerial attack, while at the same time maintaining a balance between unacceptable restrictions on the fire of air defense artillery weapons and the accidental destruction of friendly aircraft. The CRS consists of a control organization, a number of early warning and air traffic control radars, and the associated communications network for the timely passage of information, orders, and directives. A second component involves forces assigned in support of counter-air operations which are to attain and maintain a desired degree of air superiority. These include offensive forces which become involved in air attacks, strikes, and fighter sweeps against enemy assets and air defense elements which detect and engage enemy aircraft and missiles threatening friendly forces installations. The third component is electronic warfare support which involves assistance from electronic warfare agencies with the flow of early warning and targeting information and electronic attack against those enemy emitters which direct his air effort. As no single weapon system has been developed which can effectively deal with all forms of air attack, various systems are employed to provide AD coverage over the communications and combat zones. These include theater-directed missile systems providing long-range, high and medium altitude coverage to well forward of the battle area and Corps assigned long-range medium altitude missile systems which provide coverage of their areas to forward of the FIBA and gun systems which are employed for airfield defense and vital point tasks as far forward as the division rear area. The low-level air threat begins to come into focus at core level. Short-range weapons are interwoven with the high and medium altitude systems to provide the required degree of protection for critical command, control and communications facilities, logistic and maintenance installations, and reserve forces. The division threat is almost exclusively at low level. Highly mobile short-range weapons are employed throughout the division area, on or near the FIBA, to maintain freedom of maneuver and provide protection to vital assets. These short-range weapon systems can operate from the surface into the medium-level height band. However, they are primarily used in the low and very low-level bands. Shorehead systems are categorized as point or area weapons. The point air defense weapon is often a gun-based entity in a tracked or wheeled vehicle designed for the close protection of combat units and specific critical assets such as logistic installations, defiles, bridges, headquarters, and vehicle columns. Also included are manned portable air defense missile weapons which are most suitable in providing protection in air mobile and assault water crossing operations. 
The area air defense weapon provides wide coverage over combat formations or groups of vital points. They concentrate on those aircraft that are striking at targets within the core or division areas and on the attrition of transiting enemy aircraft. The functions of tactical air defense involve early warning, protection, attrition, and airspace control. Early warning of an attack comes from many sources, including air defense artillery fire units' early warning radars and specialized radars and sensors in the control and reporting system. The early warning function also involves air defense artillery commanders allotting resources, alerting local air defense and ground force units, maintaining the required degree of response, and queuing weapon systems to meet the incoming threat. Air defense warnings represent the air defense commander's evaluation of the probability of an air attack and are expressed as condition red, meaning an air attack is imminent or in progress. Condition yellow, attack is probable. And condition white, an attack is unlikely. Warnings also include unit or subunit readiness states, which will be battle stations, standby, or stand down, as required to balance the requirement for quick reaction to an attack with the need for crew rest and weapons maintenance. Air defense artillery provides varying degrees of protection in accordance with the tactical requirement. This involves an appreciation to determine area, point, and route defense tasks to satisfy the commander's priorities. Area defense is designed to provide a volume of airspace under which maneuver forces can operate with a degree of protection from enemy air activities. It degrades the enemy's capability to conduct low-level reconnaissance, target strikes, and transit flights. An area defense would involve an entire battery deployed to firing sites within the air defended area, allowing any three fire units to engage an intruding hostile aircraft. Some designated critical points will likely receive weighted coverage and are included within its boundaries. Point defense involves the protection of a specific asset or vital point, which is not normally more than 500 meters in diameter. A point task normally involves a section's weapon systems, which are generally adequate to defend against a formation of four attacking aircraft. Individual weapon sites are normally selected close to the VP covering the main approaches, which directly relate to the time required to detect, identify, engage, and intercept a hostile aircraft prior to its arrival at the line of weapon release. Route defense is designed to provide coverage along a designated route or axis of advance. Its effectiveness is dependent on the length of the route, adjacent terrain, and the number and types of available air defense weapons. A route defense task would likely involve a battery's worth of fire units deployed to the left and right of a 50 kilometer stretch of the road and offset from it. Certain critical bridge or defile locations would likely be weighted to prevent their being blocked or destroyed. The third tactical function of air defense is attrition, wherein air defense artillery destroys or damages enemy aircraft. In the combat zone, this would normally involve the deployment of core air defense artillery weapons to cover the most likely air approaches and would be undertaken at the expense of area or point coverage. The final tactical function of air defense artillery is to control the formation's airspace, allowing the maximum freedom for air defense weapons without placing excessive restrictions on the movement of friendly aircraft and other airspace users. Airspace control in the combat zone is mainly handled by the Corps and Division Air Defense Cells, 
working with the Air Support Operations Center and with the various fire support coordination centers and tactical air control parties at division and brigade headquarters. Rules of engagement delineate the circumstances and limitations under which individual weapons can fire. They are issued by the air defense commander and are disseminated downwards by means of orders and operating procedures. Rules include electronic, visual, and procedural criteria by which an aircraft may be identified and designated as hostile or friendly. The rules also define the various weapon engagement zones, wherein a priority for engagement is allocated to those systems which are best able to deal with the target. These include fighter aircraft, as well as high missile, low missile, and short range air defense engagement zones. The rules of engagement are implemented by weapons control orders, fire control orders, and airspace control orders and directives. Weapons control orders are universally applied and provide for the protection of friendly aircraft in concert with the ground tactical situation. These orders are defined as weapons unlimited, which permits weapons to be fired at any aircraft. Weapons free, which allows firing at all aircraft not identified as friendly. Weapons tight, which only allows firing at aircraft or targets positively identified as hostile. And weapons hold, when systems may only be fired in self-defense or in response to a formal order. They may be used in combination and locally modified with additional restrictions. Fire control orders are issued to direct or stop the firing of AD artillery systems and they take precedence over the current weapon control order. These orders are defined as engage, cease engagement, and hold fire. And lastly, the rules are implemented by airspace control orders and directives which involve aircraft movements, designation of air corridors and restricted areas, and any other measures deemed necessary by the Airspace Management Authority to permit the safe passage of friendly air traffic. The most important contribution air defense artillery can make towards success on the battlefield is to allow maneuver units to move and fight and combat support and combat service support elements to function without interference from the air. This gives the formation commander the assurance that he can successfully execute his mission even under the threat of air attack.